Hi everyone, it's Miss Missy and I am going to share with you a little bit today about some things that Jesus said from the book of John in a lesson called Jesus Said What? Jesus taught us many great things about how we should live and how we should treat other people. But some of the most important things he spoke were the things he told us about who he was, God himself. So today we're going to talk about seven different things that Jesus said he was, starting with the first one, which kicks off all of the rest of them. Imagine that you are going to a party in ancient Israel. Everybody is wearing a name tag that says, hello, my name is, including you. You meet a former fisherman named Peter who introduces you to his brother, Andrew. You meet a woman named Mary Magdalene. You meet a former tax collector, a reformed con man named Matthew. You meet a doctor named Luke. And then you meet a man from the town of Nazareth whose name tag just says, Hello, my name is I Am. Someone from our time would be tempted to say, I am who? Come on, what's your name? Tell us what your name is. You can't just be I Am. But the people of ancient Israel, they knew exactly who I Am was. The great I am was God the Father. He was the one who called their forefather Abraham. He was the one who sent Moses to save the ancestors from slavery. I am was God. If someone dared to call themselves I am, they had better be able to back it up. Jesus backed up his claim in his words and his actions. He died on the cross and rose from the grave. He is our Savior. And he is the promised Messiah who came to save us from our sins. But Jesus didn't leave anything out when he said, I am. Who is Jesus? He is I am. He is our God and our Lord. For many years, superheroes worked very hard to keep people from discovering their true identity. Superman put on a suit and a pair of glasses to become mild-mannered news reporter Clark Kent. Bruce Wayne lowered his voice and donned a black hood to become Batman. And Peter Parker hid his face when he became Spider-Man so he could keep his Aunt May and Mary Jane out of danger. Then one day, along came Tony Stark. After forging an arc reactor and building the iron super suit he used to save the day, Tony's advisors prepared a statement for him, saying the suit was his invention, but that somebody else was inside of the suit. Tony could have gone the safe route. He could have kept his identity a secret and saved himself a lot of trouble later on. Instead, Tony got up to the podium and said this. Anyone know what he said? I am Iron Man. With those four words, Tony Stark set the tone for his own adventures and the entire Marvel Universe. Tony Stark was Iron Man. He was the hero, and he didn't want there to be any confusion about it. As stunning as those words were, though, they pale in comparison with some of the words that Jesus spoke. Today, we're going to look at some of the statements that Jesus said about himself. He always chose his words carefully, but he still made it abundantly clear who he was and why he had come to earth. We're going to start with the very first proclamation, just like Tony's one that meant a lot more to the people of his time than meets the eye. We're going to read in John chapter 8, verses 42 through 59. Jesus is speaking to a group of Jewish people. If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and arrived here. I didn't come on my own. He sent me. Why can't you understand one word I say? Here's why. You can't handle it. You're from your father, the devil, and all you want to do is please him. He was a killer from the very start. He couldn't stand the truth because there wasn't a shred of truth in him. When the liar speaks, he makes it up out of his lying nature and fills the world with lies. I arrive on the scene, tell you the plain truth, and you refuse to have anything to do with me. Can any one of you convict me of a single misleading word or a single sinful act? But if I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Anyone on God's side listens to God's words. This is why you're not listening, because you are not on God's side. Then the Jews said to him, that's it. 
We were right all along when we called you crazy and demon possessed. But Jesus said, I am not crazy. I simply honor my father while you dishonor me. I am not trying to get anything for myself. God intends that something gloriously grand will happen here and is making the decisions that will bring that about. I tell you this with absolute confidence. If you practice what I'm telling you, you'll never have to look death in the face. At this, the Jewish people became very upset and said, Now we know you're crazy. Abraham died. The prophets died. And you show up saying, If you practice what I'm telling you, you'll never have to face death. Not even a taste. Are you greater than Abraham who died and the prophets who died? Who do you think you are? Jesus said, If I turn the spotlight on myself, it wouldn't amount to anything. But my father, the same one you say is your father, put me here at this time and in this place. You haven't recognized him at all, but I have. If I said I didn't know what was going on, I would be as much of a liar as you are. Because I do know, and I am doing what he says. Abraham, your father, with jubilant faith, looked down the halls of history, and he saw my day coming. He saw it, and he cheered. And then the Jews said, But you're not even 50 years old, and Abraham saw you? Believe me, said Jesus, I am who I am long before Abraham was around. That did it for the Jewish people. That pushed them over the edge. They picked up rocks to throw at him, but Jesus quickly slipped away, getting out of the temple. After proclaiming that he is God's son and that everyone who loves God will love him, Jesus sends his accusers into a frenetic frenzy with just two words of Tony Stark's proclamation of, I am. I am, you ask. I am what? Who is Jesus? By simply saying the words, I am, Jesus is saying, I am God. I am the one who called Abram to leave Ur and travel to the promised land. I am the one who protected Joseph so he could save his family from famine. I am the one who sent Moses to save Israel from slavery. The religious leaders knew God had called himself I am to all of those biblical heroes. So did the people listening. And when Jesus said, I am who I am, he left no doubt as to who he was. When God sent Moses to Pharaoh to set the Israelites free, God told Moses to tell Pharaoh, I am sent you. Only God is I am, and only God can say I am. A good teacher or a good person would never have said those things to the Israelites. Jesus could only be one of three things, a liar, out of his mind, or the great I am. The rest of Jesus' statement, and the, indeed the rest of all of the Gospels of the New Testament, make it very clear that Jesus is indeed who he claimed to be. Not only did he perform miracles that defy explanation, he died on the cross and rose from the grave. Jesus is I am. He is our God and our Savior. He said it with his lips. And he backed it up with his words, with his life, his death, and his resurrection. But I am is only the beginning of Jesus' astonishing claims. So let's look at a few other things that Jesus said that he was. In John chapter 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. After Jesus fed the 5,000, that's what he told the people. I am the bread of life. Then in John chapter 8, he tells us that he is the light of the world. Light allows us to see and keeps us from stumbling in the dark. Many people in this world live in a spiritual darkness because of their sin. But Jesus is the light of the world who can show us the good and right way to live. In John chapter 10, Jesus says that he is the gate for the sheep. Throughout the Bible, God's people are described as his sheep. So saying that he is the gate for the sheep is showing that Jesus 
is the only way that we can enter into a relationship with God by going through him. John chapter 10, Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd who feeds and cares for and protects his sheep. He is our good shepherd and we are his sheep. He even went so far as to lay down his life for us. In John chapter 11, Jesus says he is the resurrection and the life. Jesus performed a miracle by raising Lazarus from the dead. And he also gave us a great promise when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He was saying that everyone who believes in him would have eternal life. In John chapter 14, he tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. People get confused sometimes thinking that there are many different ways to God. But Jesus said that the only way to the Father and to life with him in heaven is through him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. In John chapter 15, we hear Jesus describing himself as the vine. The branches of a plant cannot survive unless they are continuously connected to the main vine. Jesus is telling us that he is that vine. And to live a holy, fruitful, and happy life, we need to be constantly connected to him. Now I want us to go back to the very beginning of our lesson, pretending we were at a party with a bunch of Israelites. I want you to imagine now that Jesus is standing in front of you with his name tag on that says, hello, my name is I am. Now that you've heard some of the statements that Jesus has said about himself, how do you feel about Jesus wearing that name tag now? Do you feel like Jesus is worthy to be wearing that name tag? <laughs>